So let's continue on our, our reflection in the book of Genesis with Noah. And notice what the Lord is doing with Noah after the great flood is that Noah offers this sacrifice, and the Lord, we see this word explicitly, the Lord makes a covenant that is an agreement, a relationship. And it's going to be through the, the series of successive covenants that we'll, we will arrive at the new and eternal covenant, which we hear every, at every Mass during the consecration. The covenant that he will make with us in Jesus Christ, the definitive covenant. But we're going back, we see this covenant is already beginning and pointing. Right? The covenant of Noah finds its fullest meaning in Jesus Christ and in, in the covenant he, he made through his blood on the cross. But you notice that the, the covenant that, that the Lord makes with Noah also has uh, is focused around blood. Right? Blood is the, is the source of life. It's what the circulation of our blood helps to distinguish us from a corpse. Right? And the blood is in life. And this is why the Lord is so concerned about the blood, so, so cle closely tied, uh, revealing our, our uh, nature as made, made in the image of God. And so this is why he, he demands that that in this, in this relationship, after he has purified the earth, that, that man has a certain responsibility to God about the blood, right? so especially human blood, which is why he has this prohibition against murder. So, so, the, so the, we have this, the covenant in the, in the, tied with blood, and the sign of that covenant is the rainbow, that the Lord has bound himself that he will never again destroy the earth through a flood. But, uh, but think about that as, as we go from the, 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 the importance of the blood and we fast forward to the new and eternal covenant whereby the covenant that actually saves, that it is, it is sealed with the blood, not just of anyone, but of Jesus Christ, God who is also man. So it's the Lord who sh sh sheds his own blood for us to save us. But in this covenant, the Lord is showing himself as absolutely and utterly good. He who has no, there's nothing uh, that forces him out of necessity or anything to make this covenant with him to bind himself in this way. But the covenant is what is doing to bind us back to him. And, it, and ultimately, it's going to be through the blood of Jesus. That blood that we receive in Holy Communion and that blood, the blood that that is making us, is divinizing us, is saving us as we walk the Christian path. And this brings us to the great saint that we have today, St. Peter Damien, of how the blood of Christ is supposed to transform us in, into becoming other Christs. And, and to St. Peter's case, he grew up under very difficult circumstances as a child. He, he, uh, he was kind of raised by an older brother who treated him very badly, then eventually he was picked up by a younger brother who, uh, uh, who helped to, to raise him and actually discovered how brilliant he was and got him educated. And so, uh, and so Peter Damien went forward and got, got educated, became a, at the age of 25, was already a, a, a well-known and well-loved uh, teacher of theology. But he uh, discovered the call to withdraw from the world and to become a hermit after the manner of St. Romuald. And this is at the, about the year 1000 when the church was undergoing a, a massive reform. Always have to remember the times what we're in, that the church has always had a need for reform, and especially about every 500 years, there is a massive reform of the church, especially of the clergy. Um, and we kind of, this is kind of following the pattern. We had a big one in the year 1000, we had a big one in the 1500s, and guess what? In the, in the, year, the 2000s, we're in the midst of another one. But, uh, but so what, what uh, Peter was a great um, advocate of reform and really helped the Pope, Gregory VII, the, the spearhead of this reform, was, it was a close personal friend of his, but he also helped the Popes after, after Gregory VII. And the, the major problem with the clergy at the time was twofold. One was called simony. And simony, as you may know, is the selling of spiritual goods for temporal goods. It's a perversion of the order of the primacy of the spiritual over the temporal. So things like selling sacraments, selling ecclesiastical offices, selling sacramentals, selling indulgences, 
all those sorts of things that the clergy had, had fallen into as a way of, gain, of personal gain, temporal gain, of, of selling off the spiritual things for, for a temporal gain. Absolutely wrong. Right? And so, and so, uh, so Peter was, was involved in helping to purify that, and along with this kind of greed was unchastity, and especially homosexuality in the clergy. And, and, and uh, Peter Damien wrote this book called The Liber Gomorrahalis, which is the, the book of Gomorrah, whereby he basically went after this, this particular vice in the clergy uh, with a particular vehemence as well. Uh, you can even go online. You can read passages of it. It's, 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 been, printed, it's been published online. But, uh, but that was, was calling for, forth for the, the, the true chastity that the priest was called to as a sacred minister. And so, the, uh, uh, so it, was, it was tough times. And Peter, through this whole uh, uh, period, was constant and brilliant and, and just and kind of hard-nosed about it. Uh, and what, what was the result? The clergy was reformed. And in fact, it was out of this, this, uh, this reform of Gregory VII, which Peter Damien had a big part in, that uh, came to where, where uh, celibacy was required of all clerics uh, in the Western Church. Uh, it had already, I mean, priests being, being celibate goes all the way back to the apostles. But as far as a discipline for the whole church came about through, through this reform. And so it's a, it's a matter, it's this, you know, staying close to the covenant and the blood of Jesus that transforms us so that we can be the instruments that he wants and needs us to be in this particular time and for our reform of the church. And of course, Peter's reform of the, one of the reasons that Peter became such a great reformer is that he first reformed himself. And, and, that, and that, from that flowed all of his apostolic activity on behalf of the church, and he is a doctor of the church and a great saint. So let's uh, let's take a lesson from him and, and ask him to help us in, in our own current reform of the church that we're going through. That will give us the confidence that we too will be reformed and the church will be reformed in this particular time. <laughs>